what I'm going to do today is just kind of showcase a few of the new and improved features that we've included with this year's version of Crosslink 1040. I'm going to talk about uh, LiveLink, introduce everybody to LiveLink, talk about the improved usability and enhancements to security and compliance that we've made this year, and then we'll wrap things up with the business package and, and discussing the business package. To begin things, let's talk about LiveLink. What we're doing here is getting Crosslink connected to a more real-time uh, connection with the central site. So things like text messaging and the remote signature capture are uh, have a persistent connection to that central site. What that helps us do is um, instead of needing to stop what we're doing and transmit, this all happens automatically in the back end, so uh, we can go about our business and these things will flow to us. Uh, to start off with, one of the things that we've connected up to LiveLink is TextLink Plus. Now what it does when you send a text message through TextLink Plus, any reply to that message is delivered to the original tax preparer as a pop-up message. So as you're working, when they reply, you get a pop-up message. And if you so choose, you can reply directly from that pop-up message. So if they say, you know, I'm coming in, do I need to bring anything in? You can quickly let them know what forms they need to bring in or, or whatever that message may be. And then you can send that message back to them so you can continue your conversation. So you don't have to stop what you're doing necessarily. You can continue that conversation and, and resolve maybe a, re a rejection or something like that right away. Next we have something that a lot of people are excited to know about. This is the remote signature capture. Basically what we've done is we've tied your smartphone into signing a tax return. Uh, you send a request that sends a link to the customer via text message the customer will sign with their finger and send that return back to you and it will automatically go into the document archive within the tax return um, in Crosslink. So let's take a look at this, just kind of slow everything down um, and take a look at the process here. Now I, I will warn you that this may change. This is pretty close to what it's going to be like, but some of this may change as the as uh, we get closer to releasing it. And right now, we don't have the ability to do this because we don't have the ability to print the tax returns. There's nothing for us to sign yet. Once we get the ability to print the returns, then we can go in here ourselves. Right now, all I have to show you is our uh, screenshots here. So as you can see, when you're, when you're ready to print the return, You'll click the print button in the toolbar within the tax return and you'll get the little print window. Right underneath the sign dock button is the remote signature button. You'll click that button and you'll get a dialog. It'll ask you, is there anybody in the office that wants to sign via the signature pad? Um, if there is, you can click yes. If not, go ahead and click no. And then immediately, again, this is all automated, but immediately the prepare and the ERO signature are applied to that return, and then that request is sent to the taxpayer. So you see down at the bottom here, uh, my taxpayer hasn't signed yet. The status is waiting for the taxpayer's signature, and you can tell in the uh, attached forms list right underneath the document archive we have the remote signature here. So now this one's waiting for the taxpayer to sign it. While we're continuing uh, completing tax returns, if we go out to the work in progress summary in the exceptions and rejects queue, there is this uh, spot right at the bottom for pending remote signatures. So you can tell right away when you have returns that are still waiting for the signature. Once all the signatures have been collected for that tax return, if we look 
again, in that remote signature section inside the tax return, it'll have a completed status. And you can see down at the bottom again, our taxpayer, John Smith, that signed has come in and uh, been applied to the tax return. Additionally, that return with the description of remote signature and the timestamp exactly when those signatures happened are entered in the document archive. So you have that paperless uh, solution as well. All of that stuff is entered right into the document archive. Now, what's it going to be like for the taxpayer? Once you click yes, I want to, or once you click no, there's nobody available in the office, um, it'll send a request to anybody that you've collected their cell phone data from you. Of course, you need to know their cell phone number. You need to know their carrier. So we can send them this message. And once you have that, it sends them a, a base text message. Looks something like this. And again, this, this may change depending on what, uh, if you're using an iPhone or an Android phone and, and what kind of phone you're using. In order to use this remote signature, the taxpayer needs to have a smartphone. It can't be something like a flip phone. We need, uh, we need that front screen. We need that smartphone ability. So they'll get a text message. They'll have this link in here. You'll click on, they'll click on the link, which will take them to a, a web page. And at this point, they'll need to verify themselves. And all of this is handled through us. So this, this is all done through us. You can do this at any time. They'll enter their last name, their date of birth, and their social security number, the last four digits, and they'll click next here. If this is verified, they get to a screen that allows them to see the tax documents. So you can see there's a little link up there that says document. They'll click on that link and it'll open up the return in a PDF format. And they'll need a PDF reader in order to read it. It, it should, uh, uh, most of them come, most smartphones come with a PDF reader these days. So that shouldn't be a problem. They'll open it up and they'll be able to read whatever it is they, they want. They'll be able to look at the entire return. Once they're okay with it, they'll come back to the screen, they'll close that PDF, and they'll mark this checkbox uh, they've read the document. They'll sign with their finger. You can see taxpayer here. And then they'll click on that green submit button. And that submits the, the signature back to you, back to Crosslink. And that's when the return gets a timestamp on it with a signature and it gets entered into the document archive. So again, let me go through that process one more time just because we had a lot of questions on it last time. I'll go back to this, this screen here. When you're ready to print the return, you'll click on print, and there'll be a remote sign button that you'll be able to click on to capture the signature. You'll click on that, and they'll ask you, hey, is there somebody in the office that wants to use the signature pad? And at this point, you can say no. <clears throat> and frankly, if you want to always use somebody's smartphone to sign their tax return, you can say no to this and send that request to their smartphone. Once that request has been sent, you'll have a little spot inside the tax return where you can look at the status. You can see when a timestamp in the prepare, when the ERO, and finally when the, the taxpayer signs. On the work in progress summary, you have a way to tell how many returns are awaiting a signature. And once they get signed, you get an update. Within the tax return in the remote signature listing, it'll tell you that the status is completed, and you'll have a timestamp within that that will also flow into the document archive. Now, when you send that request to the, the taxpayer, They'll get a link within their text messaging. When they click on that link, they'll have to verify themselves. You know, right here, last name, date of birth, and last four digits of the social security number. 
once they're verified, they have the opportunity to review those documents. Once they've reviewed the documents, they'll mark the checkbox at the top, I read the documents, and they'll sign with their finger, and they'll click the green submit button, and that, that'll send that request back to Crosslink, and will be entered in your document archive. That's when you get updated. So that's the remote signature. Um, and that's all connected, again, to LiveLink. I don't want to lose that connection there. LiveLink makes this all happen automatically in the background. You say yes, and, or you say that you want to connect and uh, sign the signature and that nobody is in the office, and the rest of that happens automatically. That text message is sent. You don't have to click transmit. When they sign, you don't have to connect to the central site to pull it down. It's all automated. The last little bit of LiveLink um, happens to be a part of our office management, our multi-office tool. The nice thing about this this year is we've connected the users, the user logins, to, um, to office management. So we have the ability to toggle them on or off. So in, let's say you find out through your reporting that maybe somebody is stealing returns from you. What you can do is log into our office management tools, and you can turn that prepare off so they no longer are able to log into the software. And all of that happens through LiveLink, which is automated through the back end. They don't have to transmit. They don't have to apply an update. All they have to do is continue working like normal, and in the background, LiveLink will disable that user login. All right, so next up, let's go into the software itself. I can show you this in this year's software. Um, and just to show you while uh, we're kind of ending up with LiveLink, right here on the exceptions and rejects queue, you can see I have my pending remote signature. So that's where you can tell how many are waiting to be signed out here. All right, next up, it happens to be an update to our database. So if we look in our database menu, the very, very bottom here, I have education institutions. This is a new database we've added. So at the beginning of the year, um, you can enter your education institutions if you know there's a few of them nearby. And when you add a return, let me just open this one here. And if I add an 8863, I have my name of the institutions. And I have a choice list here that I can choose that name. And it'll automatically enter the address for me. So it'll speed up the, the process of entering those education credits. Another update that's worth pointing out is in the billing setup. If we look in the billing setup, there are two checkboxes that we have down at the bottom here. Don't bill for Schedule A when using standard deduction. If total itemized deductions are less than standard deductions, you might choose not to bill for that Schedule A. So you can use this checkbox here to toggle that on and off if that's something that you want. Additionally, we've included an option that can force a preparer to choose the bank disbursement option right on the bank application. So this can help uh, kind of alleviate some of the mistakes that we come across um, with these forms. Also, we have some new bank disbursement options that we might not be all be aware of at first. So this will help alleviate some of the mistakes that we see that might be coming when it comes to entering the disbursement option correctly. That's in the billing setup. If we look in office setup, office setup on the defaults tab, there are a few here I want to point out. Use Windows hotkey. This allows us now to use the Windows hotkeys, like Control-C and Control-V. 
This will allow us to copy words around, copy information around the form um, if we're used to using the Windows keys rather than being forced to just use the mouse. Another thing we've added is blind entry or add new return. Now what this allows us to do, I'm just going to jump out of this return. I'll add a new one. When we start a return, if we enter the social security number here, it'll notice it's all in asterisks. If I go down to the second one, the second one's in asterisks. So we're forcing the preparer to read that W, uh, the social security number off of the W-2 rather than just reading what they entered for the first so, uh, social security number there. If it doesn't match, then of course the return's not going to open. Now let's go back inside a tax return here. Inside each return we have the document archive. And if I open up, we agree to, like we're going to scan our own with our integrated scanner. It used to be that we had a list here that only had identification, income sources, and other items. Now we've added to this. So you can quickly add a little description to those items that you're scanning into the document archive. Also, if you're using your own scanner to import documents, we've included that same type listing for the uh, import as well. Now to talk about some of the, the uh, improvements we've made to security and to our, uh, our tax return audits, um, we're always looking at improving those things even throughout the tax season. This year we've included the business module um, along with the, the uh, access levels so you can lock certain preparers out of business returns if that's what you need to. Additional EIC validations and tax alert validations have been included um, just to make sure that we're all adhering to our IRS due diligence requirements. Um, additionally, we've included things like a stronger enhanced encryption when you install the program. And all of these things help us preserve our data um, as far as all that personal data that we gather from our tax preparers, and our tax, our tax preparers gather from our taxpayers. And finally, we continue to improve our business solution as well. This year, we've added forms. Uh, we've added 10, the 1041 and the 990. We've also expanded our state selection. And we now have the ability to email a K-1 directly from the K-1 manager. And all of the um, user enhancements that we've made to the individual side are also uh, included in the business side. It works exactly the same.